So I just had this Bobcat drive motor sent to me. I don't know the symptoms of the machine, but we want to go into this motor and see if we can find out what was wrong with it. Uh, is our derailleur section damaged? Is, uh, is our seals blown? Maybe we just had a uh, drive in one direction and, and not the other. But we won't know until we get in here, unfortunately. I, I was not told what the symptoms of the machine are. Just sent me the drive motor, see if we can fix it. So, um, this is probably one of the most common drive motors you will find on like kind of the mid-frame size Bobcats. I mean, the 700 series, the, the smaller S series, the uh, 160, 75, 80. I'm going to leave a whole list of machines. And a matter of fact, this same single speed drive motor is being used today. This is what, 2021 on the Bobcat new R series. And so what's that been like 25 years this motor has been you know, same style uh, motor has been in production. And so uh, chances are you will, you will probably have this, this style motor if you got a single, single speed mid-size frame. So um, one thing that's on this we will notice is that we have uh, bolts on the outside. So this is called a dry bolt motor. Now this is the later version of this motor. It's possible that you've got bolts on the inside over here where our case drain oil would be and that would call, be called a wet bolt motor. So if, if you're about to pull your drive motor out for a rebuild and you don't see the bolts in the outside of the case, especially if it's a single speed motor, um, I'm going to leave a card right up here where we uh, actually rebuilt one of those motors, a wet bolt. And they're extra, very, very similar, but there are some differences. Um, again, this is a Giroller, not to be confused with Girotor. This is Giroller motor. And this section here is our Giroller. And that's the, uh, that's the part that we really need to take a look at because if that section's damaged, uh, we, you know, you can't buy parts for it. You have to buy this whole section all together. And we'll take a look at that. And that, that's well over a thousand dollars just for that Giroller section. So uh, it, at that point, then you're looking at, do I get a remand pump or do I, uh, you know, continue with the rebuild or do I just get a new motor? Um, that is up to you, but price-wise, a lot of people just replace it um, if that Giroller section is damaged. So to start, we're gonna pull the bolts out of the outside. Now these are a 12-point socket. That's how we're gonna get those out. And I, can, uh, I can't get the shaft out until we, uh, until we loosen up that case. But let's go ahead and pull out our shuttles and our check so before we tear it down let's see that one goes here this one goes here so this is our check we're going to have a plug a spring and a poppet so we want to inspect our spring make sure there's no metal in there make sure our springs not broke So here's our little check that comes out of there and that's actually a plastic piece. And we just wanna look at the seat on top of that and make sure it's not damaged. It all looks good. It's no problem with that. And now we're gonna pull out our shuttle section. Now this shuttle valve kind of um, it prevents high pressure oil from going to the low side. Uh, so when, you, when, when you're driving forward, it would block off high pressure oil from the other side and allow that low pressure case drain oil to flow through the motor uh, for cooling and, and such. So we also wanna pull those components out and inspect. So again, our outer plug Spring and pop it look good. No damage, no debris on those. And then we've actually got our shuttle. I don't know if I can get that out right now.
So now we can see our actual shuttle. And I'm just inspecting the shuttle, make sure there's no scarring or anything on it. Because if this shuttle was hanging up, it would, uh, that high pressure oil would not be able to, or would be bypassing and would, would cause problems with the motor. So everything looks good there. Let's go ahead and tear down the motor itself. So before I take this off, you can mark this motor because there's several sections here and we gotta make sure all these sections go back in the same way or make sure we don't get one upside down. But it's pretty straightforward and we'll have a case drain hole in here and we want those case drain holes to line up on each section. I mean, there's just one case drain hole in each section. We line those up and that's how we put it back together. But if you wanna put a mark on it and make you feel a little better, then yeah, absolutely by all means, go ahead and put a mark on it. So our outer section here, is considered our end plate. So we're gonna pull off our end plate. Inspect that for any damage anywhere. And we've got this O-ring here in the center. And we're just looking at it for any type of damage, but I don't see any damage on this seal that would cause any issues. So my end plate looks good. Now here's the, uh, the other side of our shuttle. It comes out through the bottom of that end plate there. Or we pulled the rest, you know, out of the top. And then this is our actual valve plate. Our valve plate is on top, backs out however you wanna look at it, goes on the uh, deroller section. So inspecting the valve plate, everything looks really good on both sides. These are square ring seals. You know, we, we like to call them O-rings, but these are actually square seal rings. They're not O-rings. Uh, looking at both sides of the valve plate here. And yeah, everything looks really good. Uh, this here is the hole I was telling you about. See, there, there's only one odd looking hole, you know, that's not around there. And that's, that's our case drain port. And you will see it's also on the Giroller section. It's also gonna be on our balance plate section. It's also gonna be on our um, end section here as well. So that's how we, we know how to put it, the rest of it back together is, is lining up that case drain hole. So, so far everything looks good. Another square ring seal. Now we're going to remove our Giroller section itself. That's why I like using these little tubs to rebuild these motors. You, you can catch all your oil and if there's any parts or anything that's going to fall out. Because on the back side of this, there should be two ball bearings that, that will fall out when you pull this apart. And you'll be like, where did those come from? So let's see if we can... 
so this is our balance plate. A balance plate is two piece. And that actually stuck to our roller section. So if we take this balance plate off, you got the inner and outer section of the balance plate. In the roller section right here and right here is those two ball bearings I was telling you about and they will actually uh, fall out and when we put this back together we just use a little grease to hold them in place. Now the roller section should be in there very tight and they just fell out so there's one ball bearing and here's the other ball bearing. See, everything stays contained in my tub here. I don't have to worry about losing anything. Um, so the roller section here, you can see is made up of these bearings. And I'm gonna inspect every one of these and we're gonna inspect um, the inner star section and the, uh, the outer section and see if there's any scoring or just anything would cause any damage. These are a little loose. Now you shouldn't really be able to push out that center section as easy as I just did so there might be a little wear on this but but we're going to inspect everything. It does feel nice and tight. I'm not really that concerned. Yeah I don't see really any scoring or let's just go ahead and pull this apart. I'm just looking at the inside where the bearings go. All that looks really good. Rotary section of the roller looks good. So everything looks really good so far inside this motor. Again, we we're talking about this is our balance plate. Two pieces, inner and outer section of the balance plate. Again, what do we notice right here? And it's our case drain hole, so that's how we know, um, you know, how, how to line that up. So, yeah, where the roller section rides on this, it all looks real good. There's no scarring, no scoring. Yeah, so far I don't see any problems with this motor. Drive shaft section looks really good. And this section right here, this is called a Bellevue washer. It's kind of a spring, it's kind of I don't know, you dome shaped. Um, and and usually I don't ever have an issue with these either. And that looks fine. Now this seal section right here, this is a backup ring and an inner O-ring. This is usually where our problem is with these seals here. But to be honest with you, I don't see any issue with these seals. This is really what I expected to be bad inside this motor because this is normally um, what does go bad. Our roller section looks good. All our um, seals look good. All of our square ring seals look good, inner and outer. So it, I, it doesn't appear that the motor itself was leaking between any of the sections. Um, you know, that that's it. We checked everything. Our checks look good. Our shuttles look good. Um, I, I honestly don't know why this motor was sent to me. Or I don't know what the problem was, but we are going to get everything perfectly clean. We're going to get a new seal kit and, uh, and put this motor back together and, and send it back out. I'm not sure, um... You know, I will, I will speak with the customer, of course, and, and ask and, you know, see what the symptoms of the machine were because, you know, if I rebuild this and send it back to him, it may not fix his problem. So, 
Anyways, let's get a new seal kit order and I'll get this rebuilt. And you know, if, 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 uh, if I find out what the original problem was, you know, I'll post it in the comments, but uh, I'm gonna have to order a kit and everything. So that was just the tear down. I just kind of wanted you to tear this down with me to let you know what we're looking at inside these. If there's no magic, there's nothing to be scared of. It's very straightforward taking these apart and putting them back together. And that's really, like I said, this, this, these, these seal kit, this backup ring and this O-ring, that's usually what the problem is, especially if the Gerolar is good. We can rebuild this motor for like $75, $80. If the Gerolar section's bad and we gotta replace the whole Gerolar, uh, you're looking at about $1,200 for this section here. So that's kind of when, when it may or may not be worth it. But as far as just resealing this, yeah, absolutely. I, I rebuild this all day long because this the motor itself uh, is, is usually to replace this is around $2,000. So yeah. Let's get this all cleaned up and, and we'll get it put back together next week. But uh, that, that's all we're going to do for today. And, uh, you know, thanks for watching. If you have any questions on this style motor, uh, let me know. But, but you know, we, we kind of went through the tear down and it's all pretty straightforward. So uh, you should be able to put that back together with the information that I gave you. So, again, thanks for watching.